Section thirty one of Our Cats and All About Them. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Algie Pug. Our Cats and All About Them by Harrison Weir. Section thirty one. Lovers of Cats. The Turks greatly admire cats. To them, their alluring figure appears preferable to the docility, instinct, and fidelity of the dog. Mahomet was very partial to cats. It is related that being called up on some urgent business, he preferred cutting off the sleeve of his robe to waking the cat that lay upon it asleep. Nothing more was necessary to bring these animals into high request. A cat may even enter a mosque. It is caressed there as the favourite animal of the Prophet while the dog that should dare appear in the temple would pollute them with his presence, and would be punished with instant death. I am indebted to the Rev. T. G. Gardner of St. Paul's Cray for the following from the French. A recluse, in the time of Gregory the Great, had it revealed to him in a vision that in the world to come he should have equal share of beatitude with that pontiff. But this scarcely contented him, and he thought some compensation was his due, inasmuch as the Pope enjoyed immense wealth in this present life, and he himself had nothing he could call his own save one pet cat. But in another vision he was censured, his worldly detachment was not so entire as he imagined, and that Gregory would with far greater equanimity part with his vast treasure than he could part with his beloved puss. Cats endowed by La Belle Stuart one of the chief ornaments of the court of St. James in the reign of Charles the Second was La Belle Stuart, afterwards the Duchess of Richmond, to whom Pope alluded as the Duchess of R. in a well-known line, Die and endow a college or a cat. The endowment satirised by Pope has been favourably explained by Wharton. She left annuities to several female friends, with the burden of maintaining some of her cats. A delicate way of providing for poor and probably proud gentlewomen without making them feel they owed their livelihood to her mere liberality but possibly there may have been a kindliness of thought for both deeming that those who were dear friends would be most likely to attend to her wishes mr samuel pepys had at least a gentle nature as regards animals if he was not a lover of cats for in his diary occurs this note as to the fire of london sixteen sixty six September 5th. Thence homeward, having passed through Cheapside and Newgate Market, all burned, and having seen Anthony Joyce's house on fire, and took up, which I keep by me, a piece of glass of Mercer's Chapel in the street, where much more was, so melted and buckled with the heat of the fire like parchment. I did also see a poor cat taken out of a hole in the chimney, joining the wall of the exchange, with the hair all burnt off its body, and yet alive. Dr. Jorton wrote a Latin epitaph on a favourite cat. Imitated in English. Worn out with age and dire disease, a cat, friendly to all, say wicked mouse and rat, I'm sent at last to ford the Stygian lake, and to the infernal coast a voyage make. Me proserpine received and smiling said, Be blessed with the knees mansions of the dead, and joy among thy velvet-footed loves, Elysian sunny banks and shady groves. But if I've well deserved, O gracious Queen, if patient under sufferings I have been, grant me at least one night to visit home again, once more to see my home and mistress dear, and purr these grateful accents in her ear. Thy faithful cat, thy poor departed slave, still loves her mistress, e'en beyond the grave. Dr. Barker kept a seraglio and colony of cats. It happened that at the coronation of George I, the chair of state fell to his share of the spoil, as prebendary of Westminster, which he sold to some foreigner. When they packed it up, one of his favourite cats was enclosed along with it. But the doctor pursued his treasure in a boat to Gravesend and recovered her safe. When the doctor was disgusted with the ministry, he gave his female cats the names of the chief ladies about the court and the male ones, those of the men in power, adorning them with the blue, red, and green insignia of ribbons, which persons they represented wore. Daniel, in his Rural Sports, 1813, mentions the fact 
that in one of the ships of the fleet that sailed lately from Falmouth for the West Indies went as passengers a lady and her seven lap dogs for the passage of each of which she paid thirty pounds on the express condition that they were to dine at the cabin table and lap their wine afterwards yet these happy dogs do not engross the whole of their good lady's affection she has also in jamaica forty cats and a husband the partiality to the domestic cat has been thus established some years since a lady of the name of greggs died at an advanced age in southampton row london her fortune was thirty thousand pounds at the time of her decease credite postieri her executors found in her house eighty-six living and twenty-eight dead cats her mode of interring them was as they died to place them in different boxes which were heaped on one another in closets as the dead are described by pennant to be in the church of st giles she had a black female servant to her she left a hundred and fifty pounds per annum to keep the favourites whom she left alive the chantrell family of rottingdean seem also to be possessed with a similar kind of feeling towards cats exhibiting no fewer than twenty-one specimens at one cat show which at the time were said to represent only a small portion of their stock these ultimately became too numerous getting beyond control signor foley is a lover of cats and has exhibited at the crystal palace cat show petrarch loved his cat almost as much as he loved laura and when it died he had it embalmed tasso addressed one of his best sonnets to his female cat cardinal wolsey had his cat placed near him on a chair while acting in his judicial capacity sir i newton was also a lover of cats and there is a good story told of the philosopher having two holes made in the door for his cat and her kitten to enter by a large one for the cat and a small one for the kitten peg woffington came to london at twenty-two years of age after calling many times unsuccessfully at the house of john rich the manager of covent garden she at last sent up her name she was admitted and found him lolling on a sofa surrounded by twenty-seven cats of all ages the following is from the echo respecting a lady well known in her profession miss ellen terry has a passionate fondness for cats she will frolic for hours with her feline pets never tiring of studying their graceful gambols an author friend of mine told me of once reading a play to her during the reading she posed on an immense tiger skin surrounded by a small army of cats at first the playful capers of the mistress and her pets were toned down to suit the quiet situations of the play but as the reading progressed and the plot approached a climax the antics of the group became so vigorous and drolly excited that my poor friend closed the manuscript in despair and abandoned himself to the unrestrained expression of his mirth declaring that if he could write a play to equal the fun of miss terry and her cats his fortune would be made cooper loved his pet hares spaniel and cat and wrote the well-known cat retired from business gray wrote a poem on a cat drowned in a vase which contained goldfish cardinal richelieu was a lover of the cat montaigne had a favorite cat among painters gottfried mind was not only fond of cats but was one of if not the best at portraying them in action and in england no one has surpassed caudery in delineation nor miss chaplin in perfection of modelling i am the fortunate possessor of several of her models in terracotta which though small are beautiful in finish of one miss chaplin informed me the details were scratched in with a pin for want of better and proper tools end of section thirty one